Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I love me a good soapy drama, <laughs> little family conflict, especially presented by a beautiful cast who has wealth, highly evolved, highly create generational wealth. It has all the elements of a good soapy drama. When you think of uh, the shows in your past that you gravitated to that may have been similar. What do you think Riches has most in common with some of those shows that you've enjoyed over the course of your life? Um, I think it's, we love a family drama. I just, I love Dallas, Dynasty, Falcon Crest. <laughs> My mom was in, she was dining in on those and we just used to, you know, jump on board and watch. So um, it's got a little bit of sauce in there as well. Um, we love all that. Just when you think you you've gone one way with a character and they turn a corner. It's just, yeah, that sort of stuff I remember. And I love it. I love it. I love, I love the character of Claudia. I love the way she's like, she is that lovable villain. She's that one you'd love to hate, you know? Mm -hmm. Claudia, you know, she kind of gets dealt a, a little curveball, as we'll learn early in the season, as we, we follow what happens with the Richards family and what's going on uh, with this hair empire that they've created. When you tap into that villain side of Claudia, what do you think makes for a good, you know, that could she, you know, like you said, we, we love to hate her. So there's that connection with her. We get it. So what do you tap into to make sure that that villainess comes out too? Yeah, I think it's more, you know, some of it's, I, I always think of her like, um, as like a panther or some kind of, um, <laughs> something, like if you cross her or you try and cross her children, she's coming for you, you know, she's always trying to protect what's hers, what she thinks is hers, and she's trying to protect her position in his family. I believe that she's probably um, worked really hard to get into this place, you know, <laughs> and she's not going to give it up easily. And things are changing, things are shifting, how we... Like, I love this a particular scene when they're talking about how uh, what we should be celebrating about black hair and black, you know, and she's got this really kind of old fashioned kind of um, idea, like maybe some of my older aunts <laughs> would have had, like, this is how you're supposed to look. And this is, how, you know, that's what's beautiful. And no, we're moving, we're advancing, we're changing mm -hmm. and shifting. So there's this, you know, and it's how she always recovers. She always recovers out of the situations I'm fascinated by it. and it's it's her ability to survive I think that's the thing we have within us all which we can connect with mm -hmm. I think this character as well what makes me most exciting about this show is we're finally getting to spend time with a cast that's not only Black and beautiful, but we get to connect with our Black brothers and sisters from across the pond who are from other places in a meaningful way that we haven't been able to before. What does it mean to you personally to have this, this show, this beautifully made show, wonderful cast, wonderful crew on a grand scale like this for Black people all over the world, to all people, but particularly Black people, to to connect and kind of bridge that dia diaspora kind of gap, I guess you could say. Yeah, definitely. I, it means so much to me because I feel like um, there's something very colonial and very, um, it's not going to help us advance if we keep fighting over the crumbs while the others are having a feast up top on the big banquet table. Hmm. So uh, this whole uh, the whole kind of you know we are more connected than we realize we share so many common um the, you know common understandings and experiences and fights and challenges the only real difference is that um particular things happened offshore where some things happened onshore if you know if you catch what i'm saying i won't go into it but the, it means a lot to me because um and me personally having to um be in a show where it's where I'm from, you know, set in London, my eyes, like even with this, my eyes are always looking to like people would go to me. So who would you relate to in terms of UK, black, British millionaire? I was like, it's always, the looks were always leaning towards the US, mm. always leaning towards, because we see so often that level of excellence, that level of power, that level of money, you know, that we don't, it's happening in the UK. You just, we just don't see enough of it. It's not celebrated enough. Um, so that was a real, real, real challenge. Well, I love that. It's a celebration and I am here for it. 
Thank you so much for your time. Beautifully performed, beautiful cast. I'm so glad you guys are there. And thank you again thank for you. your time. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you guys for your time. I'm very excited to speak with both of you because, baby, I am here for the brother-sister duo. Yes. Uh, I am here for the the natural elegance you both bring and realness that you brought to your characters. I, I just really, really loved it. And I'm very excited for this show to hit the airwaves. Deborah, beginning with you for Nina, what I appreciate about this show is we have an opportunity now to see this beautiful, Black, rich family who's chaotic and has drama and complicated and all these layers to, to what makes the family the family go. Could you speak to me about what it personally means to you to see Black Americans, British, all together in one project in a way that we haven't seen before to kind of bridge those two gaps? It means the absolute world to me because, you know, given my background, I'm Nigerian. I was born in London, moved to America, moved back to London. And so I've had the blessing of um, experiencing uh, the Black experience from many different angles. And in that, I've become very well aware of the fact that while we have our differences, we, are, we have a lot of similarities and we have a lot of shared experiences. And um, I've also become aware of the fact, the unfortunate fact that a lot of us don't know that. Mm -hmm. And the power in knowing that. And I really, really hope and pray that a show like this will bridge the gap in that way to show us that we have those shared experiences, that we're not alone in our experiences. That, you know, one of the things um, in 2020, when there were all those um, protests going on, one of the things that I found so beautiful, so touching, is that protests across the world sprung up. Mm -hmm. Talking about Black lives, like our lives matter. That was one of the first times of my lifetime that I've seen like us on such a united front fighting for the same thing across the world and realizing like, wait a minute, you guys are going through the same thing. You guys are going through the same thing. You're going through, you know what I mean? And I just really hope and pray that again, like a show like this really shows us that we're in this together, you know? Um, and it kind of bridges the gap in that way. That's something that I'm so personally passionate about. And yeah, I'm excited to play a role that celebrates that. I am too. Hopefully there's some more shows on the Amazon platform. It's called Small Acts. It's like a group of films that also show that connection. So hopefully people will watch your show and then go back and watch those too. <laughs> Emmanuel, over to, to you. I What I love about this, it's so well-written, so well-performed. And I thought about some of my favorite soapy dramas from the past. I always say Erica Kane and all of them raised me growing up on all my children with my mom and my grandma. What do you think Riches has in common with these super popular shows of the past while still bringing it in a, in a modern form? I was actually just talking to Deborah about Sunset Beach because <clears throat> myself and a friend... We were talking about it the other day and how that impacted us growing up. I think Riches, Riches gives you those plot twists in such a juicy way that those shows knew how to do. Do you know what I mean? These things where you're like, oh my gosh, that's her son and he's her lover. And oh, it's 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 that high octane drama where um, you just want it straight to your veins. I <laughs> think <laughs> at the same time, what makes it modern is we are dealing with issues that the black people are dealing with in the real world. Those shows are able to kind of take you away further in, in an escape because those characters are fortunate enough to not carry our struggle. But what Riches shows you is that even with the wealth and the money and the power, you're still black. So you will still deal with those issues, even if you are from the UK, the Caribbean or America, wherever you're from, we are one people, which is what Deborah was essentially saying. And I think, again, that is going to be very unifying for everybody to watch. I'm so excited that Amazon is dropping it everywhere at the same time. Let Nigerians tune in, Ghanaians, Americans, ev let everybody tune in and say, oh, OK, you get it. This you get it. You know. I love it. Get your jollof, get your gumbo, get yes. your whatever yes. you're going to have on that yes. night. 
and yep. it's going to be good. Oh, there's going to be chicken too. We all like chicken. <laughs> Yeah, that's the world unifier right there <laughs> well i thank you guys they're giving me the wrap it up congratulations to you wonderful show enjoy your premiere and i can't wait to see the twitter fingers get going <laughs> thank you thank you guys happy for your time i appreciate it oh thank you nice to meet you jandra very nice to meet you as well I thank you for this series. And one one thing in particular that made me very, very happy to see it is to see our brothers and sisters across the pond in storytelling in a way that can kind of further bridge that diaspora gap that we have between us. Could you speak a little bit more of what that means, how that fulfills you personally and what you hope viewers of Riches will receive from seeing our, our brothers and sisters across the pond after they finish watching? Sure. Um, yeah, I think I, I wanted to be as specific and grounded as possible and authentic to the truth of, of the experience. And as someone who is of Nigerian heritage, but I was born in London, but at the time my mum in the 60s came to the UK, her sister went to New York. And so I have cousins who sound more like you than they do like th as, than me. So I think the diaspora is a very real part of our lived experience, especially for, you know, for immigrants, but certainly I've also lived in the US for almost five years. And that sense of seeing that black American interest in the continent of Africa, in the, you know, everyone I know was going to Ghana one year. I was like, I didn't get the memo. I feel like there is this connection and there is this um, movement where we are flowing from the UK to the US to Africa. And we are this sort of surging interest in those roots and those connections. And, and, but I hadn't yet seen that on screen, really. Um, so I think that's what, where I wanted to have fun with that. I think it feels incredibly aspirational and current. And I hope that what we take from it is the ways in which we're more similar than different. You know, the, the roots that connect us both in terms of our grit, mission, the ways in which we um, circumvent obstacles and how sometimes those obstacles, whether you're in England or the US, are pretty similar. But but Overall, though, it's kind of the joy and the connectedness that this family each other as well, which is the connection. I didn't get the Ghana email either. I wanted to go during the year of the return either. So we're going to have to just go next Everyone's time. There. I know, we got to definitely. For sure. Speaking to this wonderfully talented cast, Sarah in particular, she spoke of just on the on the British side, seeing wealthy, rich, established Black British people on the screen was meaningful for her because people are evolving and and accumulating generational wealth, but the stories are not there. Was that an observation of yours as well in, in crafting this storytelling? Because that was particularly meaningful to her. Yeah, no, absolutely. I feel like when I was growing up, there were so few depictions of any kind of Black British life that I learned about more about my Blackness from watching Friends, Moesha. Those were my shows because there were so few Black British shows. There were none, you know, candidly. There was maybe one or two throughout my entire childhood. So it's very much that where we are in the UK is we need more depictions of all types of black British life um, but certainly it you know as much as there'd probably be more sort of upper middle class affluent black Americans on screen we haven't had that here so it was it was exciting to try and do that and make it feel authentic and real and specific to their experience here and really enjoy and celebrate that but also be clear that money can buy you all kinds of things, but happiness isn't necessarily on the menu. And so they will have that mess and that, you know, those conflicts that um, people can connect with as well, because family is family, whether you're rich or poor. Absolutely. My my mother and I still like to joke. She's a very avid soap opera watcher still. She still watches General Hospital every day. And I thought, and you know, I always joke, I say Erica Kane and all those kind of people raised me growing up. And Riches has this wonderful quality of making you lean in. What do you think Riches has most in common with those great dramedies of the past? I mean, I like I guess um, my mum and my um, some of my aunts. The kind of the gospel, according to Aaron Spelling, is what I call it because <laughs> all those shows were on. I was watching them way too young. But I think when you get those shows at such formative ages, the things that stick with you are these matriarch 
blocks these dominant women who take up space and look fabulous doing it. And so I, I feel like that's what I took from them. And it was important for me to depict, um, you know, complex um, black characters with myriad sort of viewpoints and they're not the same viewpoint. You know, at a point I felt like when you watch black men on screen at a certain point in British TV, they got to be the cop or the robber, but nothing in between. And I want you to look at Claudia and be, God, is she villainous? Is she a mama bear looking after her kids? Is she a woman of a certain generation and age who made the choices she did because marriage was her way out, you know? So I think just seeing the, the sort of myriad um, flaws, they're flawed, they're, you know, daddy issues, dying to connect, desperate to connect with each other. And there is still a love that binds them ultimately. Absolutely. Well, congratulations to you and the cast. I cannot wait to see the Twitter fingers get going. I was here for it. All the soap. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Deandra. Have a good day. You too. Take care. Thank you guys for your time. I am so excited for this show because I am excited to see some beautiful Black people in some soapy mess. I am here for it. <laughs> and you guys are giving that to me in a meaningful way. I'll begin with you, Aneka. Am I, am I saying your name correctly? Thank you. So, thank you so much. With Wanda, you know, I can relate being the baby of the family. I have a lot of older siblings and you know, when my dad passed away, it was a little bit of drama with that too. What do you think is the the position that the youngest plays when the family is in chaos? Because everyone says the baby is spoiled, but what do you what position do you think Wanda plays for this family? I think you know, Wanda Wanda is a little bit spoiled, and I think in what what's a little bit different about her upbringing to uh, her siblings is that she was around when her dad had money. She was never, she wasn't present um, when they were struggling. So she's very used to this life and used to this status. Um, mm -hmm. I think she, being the youngest, almost has to fight to be heard, mm -hmm. but she isn't afraid of taking up space at all. Um, she really leans into, into being present and owning who she is. Um, and I think because she's a real daddy's girl um, and, and her dad really gave her the best of him. Um, I think she finds it particularly difficult because she's someone who is, who is very, very loyal. And it's very, very tricky for her seeing all the mess, as you've said, like unfolding in front of her. She, she really wants to do what her dad would have done in this situation, but the situation wouldn't be happening if her dad, um, was here so she's she's fighting for her voice to be heard but ultimately she wants Stephen her dad's voice to be heard through hers I like that you know Ola over to you flipping to the other side you know the son is supposed to take you know the, the next in line to take care of the business to be the man of the house to take care of all these things but what yeah. I truly enjoyed about this is the fact that now we as Black Americans can now connect with the rest of our Black brothers and sisters and see a story and see it on a major platform in a very meaningful way. So what does that mean for you personally to, to have the show be available to all of us in, in such a way? Um, for me, I would say I, I, love, I love a good story because I think you can connect, you can connect with people from, from around the world um but the quality of whatever it is that you're watching may not be great or the quality of the work that's being produced may not be great so you might actually not want to connect so you're like oh man i really wanted to connect with you and you just brought something that's not good but the main thing for me here is that this is good work you know like it, it's good quality work it's it's good writing it's well filmed it's everything good acting as well and so i think um everybody wants to <laughs> it's like when you see that that person that family member the long lost family member that's doing something great you're like oh I know them you know um it's great to be part of something um that people can appreciate around the world I have family in Nigeria and they can't wait to see it too and that you know that does something for me it kind of makes me feel like yeah I have to carry on and I'm I'm happy for them to see it it's not like I'm trying to hide it do you know what I mean so, so yeah, just to be able to produce good quality work 
um, and have people be proud of that. That's that's so great. Definitely not hiding it for sure. Anika, lastly for you, um, what what I really enjoy about your character is, you know, she's unwavering, she's straightforward, and we really can develop sort of a kinship with her. Would the same for you? What do you think she adds to the family in a way that some of the other characters don't? I think, you know, the opposite of Wanda, Alicia grew up before the family was successful. So she was there through the lows. Uh, she was there before Stephen, her dad, became, you know, a very successful businessman and basically was the top of the game in the beauty industry. And I think so now that the family business is doing so well and she's also doing well in her family business she can see both sides to it so for me I think Alicia is the voice of reason she actually looks at it from both sides and I think when she's making decisions and talking to her brother and sister about choices and all that sort of stuff sorry there was a fly um her brother and sister about choices and all that sort of stuff it comes from a place of you know I've seen both sides to this. I know the family business before we were successful. And I also know the family business while we're successful. And I think she's always looking at the best interests of the business, which ultimately means the best interests of the family. And I think sometimes uh, her family members underestimate her. And um, that sort of feeds into her insecurities a little bit. I think although, yeah, she comes across as unwaving and very hard, and very confident and sort of straight talking I think sometimes that's her protecting herself that she feels like maybe she doesn't feel like she's always you know the right person to speak all the time I think that's always going on in the back of her back of her mind and that's something that I've always sort of like really liked about Alicia but yeah she's definitely the voice of reason within within the family dynamic for sure. Self-preservation is key for everybody on this show. Thank you guys for your time. Very, very excited for everyone to see this so we can chat about it, get on the Twitters with it. It's going to be really fun. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.